internet, uh, satellite internet. Uh, my last internet was DSL, and uh, my upload speed was something like oh uh, half half a megabyte per second. <clears throat> this one's supposed to go up to five. Uh, so Stuart, not Stuart, Chuck and I did a test uh, on it, and it seemed to be okay last time. But there's no guarantee. So I didn't put this out there a lot of places. So uh, hopefully we'll have a few people show up uh, just to kind of help us uh, get the word out about World uh, World Anvil and the world of Arid on World Anvil. Kind of bring people back to where we are, show them what we've done, and maybe get some ideas about what we want to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, no, I'm not a Dr. Pepper fiend like Steve. I'm more a coffee guy. I'll drink coffee all day, uh, given my druthers. Uh, but uh, let's see. Let's see if this is working. Looks like it is. Just moving my screen around. I may play around with this a little bit, try to get <clears throat> set up so you can see. I tried to maximize the uh, size of the screen so that you could see the World of Aired site. But I'll have to switch over there in just a minute. That's one of the advantages that uh, everybody has over me. I work off of just one little laptop. And uh, um, who else? Uh, Chuck has a couple screens. Steve has two or three screens. Me, I just work off of a 13-inch laptop that I can move around. It makes it real easy for me to uh, do it. Oh, you know what? I forgot to change the title. Let me see if I can do that. <clears throat> and then, because uh, it's just going to send out GM Tricks of the Trade. And I'm just not quite sure. I know how to do it over here. All right, so let's see if I can fix that while we're talking. Uh, presents world, world of aired on world anvil. And we'll get rid of that. Worlds. World building that work and done. So, if uh, anyone's out there, if you can let me know if you can hear and see me, <clears throat> I'm not sure uh, what I've got uh, working or not. Like I said, we played around with it and hopefully we had it sort of fixed. But uh, I can't guarantee that. Um, let's see. All right. So now I've got it changed. So hopefully people will see if they log in that we're doing World Anvil. Uh, World Baird on World Anvil. <clears throat> but we'll give a few minutes to see if anybody wants to show up. Hi, Pete. Okay. How is the uh, quality, Pete? Vic Danger, thanks for stopping by. Uh, so you can see and hear me. That's good. Um, like I said, it's satellite internet, so uh, it's better than DSL, but it's not uh, uh, it's not it's not normal. Not what I use, what I have in Maine. Of course, I have you know broad uh, band um, cable and everything else, which makes it so much so much better. But out here in the middle of nowhere, uh, this is about as good as it gets. Um, I, I finally got fed up with the uh, uh, slight background hiss. Okay, that's probably just my audio settings. I'm going to mess around with some of these uh, at some point, see if I can get them straightened out. But uh, yeah, out here you can't get anything. <clears throat> you go into town, but that's about seven miles. You can't really get much out other than that. So we just, you know, we can download, we can watch. Uh, we can stream on Netflix and Hulu and those sort of things. And I can Skype with Steve, it seems, a lot better, uh, and Chuck and whomever, than I can upload on on uh, Twitch. For some reason, it just sort of makes it a little bit harder. Uh, so now we're just trying to get them going. All right, thanks. Is that Chuck? Hey, Chuck. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't figure it would be Steve. It's lunchtime, so he's now... Diving into his hamburger and french fries and Dr. Pepper, uh, most likely, if I know him, and I, and I, I do. <clears throat> uh, so, we're just going to take a few minutes here, see if anybody wants to show up. I didn't advertise this much. I'm just sort of going to get out there and get started 
make a test. Maybe we'll do a little bit of time. Uh, I'll explain it because this will be archived, correct, Chuck? We'll be able to put this over on YouTube. So then we'll at least have a record of it and we can start up anew. I'm hoping to get like Bake and, and Wayne and a few others that have been working on this in here eventually. Uh, but we'll have to do it on uh, days that they're not around, the days that they're not working real jobs. You know, part of what I want to do <clears throat> is try to do these these streams. But I also know that in the morning's a better time, uh, or later uh, when every it's not so busy around four o'clock when Chuck to hey Daniel when uh, Chuck starts to do I mean Steve starts to do his his streams four o'clock is when it's very popular. So my stuff is really slow. At that time so when I'm trying to watch it I finally figured out that I just put the quality down to like 360 and uh, Steve looks blurry but you know Steve looks better blurry anyway so you know I, it doesn't really affect it that much hmm. anyway let's see where we are so <clears throat> goodness this how I don't know it's been about it seems like a year since we uh, started doing uh, the world of aired on world anvil and we've had a whole bunch of people come through and help us get a lot of it in there and for for you for those of you who don't know what it is it's basically where you can go and put your world uh, that you created up on the internet and so we started doing this um, like I said I don't know how long ago but Chuck got us into it uh, and we've been we've been going with it ever since ups and downs and trying to get things straightened out but uh, let me see if I can get over here and get the screen now this is where I'd have the disadvantage I won't be able to see that unless I make it smaller um, but actually you know what I'll do I'll put the questions over here on the phone and that way if anyone's talking I'll be able to see it uh, I have to find my twitch app first <clears throat> get this sucker up all right so as you can see on the screen we've got the world of aired um, created by troll Lord games baked sauce uh, Red Dragon, which is Wayne. Uh, we had a lot of other people, Epi and a few others, uh, help us. You can see them down here. Uh, so this has been quite a team effort. Uh, we've had a lot of people working on this thing because we didn't just sort of put up our world up on, on World Anvil. We ended up taking everything. All of the Codex of Aired. Play, well, we haven't got everything, but we're working on it. Player's Guide to Aired. Anything that had to do with uh, Aired. Uh, and then we also put in the adventures. Uh, we've put in some NPCs. We've put in, um, excuse me, all the maps. And these maps are amazing. Peter's done a great job. Uh, and so, let, all right, let me see if I can get this going. And I'm just going to pan down through here and show everybody. There's a section here that you want to know where to begin. That's sort of a little um, primer on, on where to begin with uh, World of Aired. Oh, I have to watch an ad over here? Why? Oh, I'm probably under TLG10. So anyway, you go here, and it gives you that wonderful uh, uh, picture. I think that's Jason's. I can't quite remember. Uh, but then this kind of gives you an idea of where to begin as far as like how to get into to our stuff but not really how to get into uh, the world of Aired and how to play with uh, Castle's Crusades which is obviously our, our flagship game um, so if anyone's still there type something in the chat room so I'll see it um, and that way I can know that it's working <clears throat> but Wayne is going to be is sort of heading up the team to kind of set up how to use uh, World of Aired or World Anvil for your games in Aired. Um, one of the things that's sort of lacking in here are the things that uh, allow you to play some of the game. You know, we don't have a dice roller, although there's a few of those out there I think that can be used in here. But I think this can be used really good in, in conjunction. Hey, Mikey B. Sit. Frog sit. <laughs> that's quite a mouthful. Um, but uh, you can uh, look in here and let's see sorry I got distracted I'm easily distracted um, but basically kind of gives a list of everything here and then um, Wayne's working on what to do uh, for 
on how to use it. And when we get down in here, you're going to see that we have a free section. So you don't have to buy into it yet if you don't want to. You can kind of take a look. Uh, if I click here on followers, um, then you'll be able to see that uh, there's a lot of stuff in here for people who just go down to the bottom and follow. Uh, and um, where is that? Yeah, 191 followers. So we're hoping to get that up over 200 soon, uh, but we haven't been advertising it much lately. Um, but uh, anything in this follower section, people can can uh, use. All you got to do is follow us, and we'll send you free access. Uh, for instance, these are all parts of Aired. And let's just pick one at random. Uh, I know there's a little lag, but we're going to go to Gall Land. <laughs> and we're going to click on that and give you a little bit of the information about uh, Gall Land. And then you can see here, I like this, if you just want to go through back and forth, we've set this up so you can go, and they're all in alphabetical order. Uh, and it allows you to kind of go back and forth and search. But you also have like a Nokia, which is one of the big parts that he plays in. Uh, and this gives you the kingdom, and these are the new flags that, uh, uh, every, that uh, Peter has been making, and they're really cool. We don't have all of them up yet. Uh, Steve has to kind of go through them, make sure they're right, and then sends them to us, and then we and low, uh, add them up. So when you get there, I still see it's lagging. Um, Gaul Land is uh, okay. Now we're gonna go. It's gonna go to Anokia. The continent of Anokia is huge, and its climate varies from tropic to cold. So it's gonna give you the climate, the landmass, the peoples that are there, a the little bit of the background, and then the history of it. Uh, and <clears throat> you'll get more in the other sections, but it kind of gives you a flavor and allows you to start playing kind of where you want to. Um, we'll hit the back button here and take a look uh, at something else. Uh, again, my internet is a little slow, so everything will be just a touch slower than well, almost anybody else on the planet. Let's go land, and there we go. <clears throat> So, when you're in the follower section, you can see that. You can see a lot of the land masses. You can see a couple of the maps. We'll take a look at those in a minute. Then you have the uh, deity stat blocks. So, let's say you go to Aminexel. And uh, someone else put this in recently. That was not me. That, lo that looks good. So, it gives you kind of a flavor of the stat blocks for the, the deities. And I'm just kind of giving it a second to try to catch up. Um, let's see if anything's happening. Great. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going back. Let's go see what else you can get in the follower section. Uh, kingdoms. <clears throat> kingdoms, which you saw one a second ago. So everything, the nice thing about you know, having this online and, and Steve always makes a big deal about books. He loves books, and he likes to fold through them and fold through them. And I, I at one point in my life, had 5,000 books or so, and my, my dad had, I don't know, just an ungodly amount. And then my mother passed away, and he moved in with me, and so we had all these books. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's great. But when you're moving, you know, I moved my dad up from Arkansas to Maine, and then we moved from one house and bought a house, and uh, that's a lot of books to move. I think, you know, if I were where I was going to be forever, <clears throat> then maybe I would just have some books. But other than that, they're just crazy uh, to have that many. Like Steve, I don't know if you, <clears throat> he's shown you before, but his library is just gigantic. And I told him that I plan to be out of the country whenever he moves anywhere. Uh, but one of the things I like about online <clears throat> is that you know, you have all your books at your fingertips, and if you want to reference something, and that's what we've been working really hard on, is if you see something in one section, and you want to click on it, you just click on it, and it takes you right there. That's perfect. So much easier than, than, than dealing with seven or eight books. Now, I get it. I love books, and I want you to keep buying our books, because, well, I need to eat. Uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely not uh, user-friendly when you're trying to do a lot of things. So if you're at a game, and you want all of this here, 
all you got to do is just just open it right up and go down to let let's say uh, do we have we have something in fiction we do we have some of these and <clears throat> this is uh, from uh, believe this a lot of these are from either the House of Scott or a Mirrored Soul which are uh, the adventures of Yurik uh, and Ava and there's some really good short stories that Steve has written uh, set in air so um, they're in here uh, so that's for anybody that uh, in the follower section can go look at these I think a night at the cockle burr is one of the first things I sort of uh, I sort of worked on or maybe someone else worked on it for me uh, well not for me but for us but you can see that the whole short story is here excuse me and those are great to, to look around uh, but we also have, I believe we have some adventures in there for you to get a flavor of it in the following follower section. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Yep, here we go. So we've got Pray the Thief, When Priests Die, and Paul for Sundry. I think these are all Davises. Um, let's check in on this one. Pray the Thief. So when you go there, uh, following groups have, oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, sorry, forget that. When you see it, it's just a note for us. But you can kind of go down through here and you can see that the whole adventure is laid out. Um, let's see. Gives you a little, the blurb on the back is basically over here where it's going to say, read the document. I hate that how this is delayed, but you guys just have to trust me, you're going to see it. Um, so it gives you an introduction. Basically, however the book is laid out, we tried to make it like that. So now you click on the document, and it takes you to the document. And this basically is a full adventure uh, that Davis wrote. And we put in all of, uh, well, we're going to eventually put in all of our aired uh, adventures. I think they're actually all in there that we have now at least in CNC, <clears throat> and uh, you can um, check them out at different levels. I think the $15 level has every single adventure uh, that is an aired, um, but this will include the maps, this will include uh, any kind of stats that are in there, uh, and also any kind of links to other adventures. Uh, so if we get off of the free section and kind of go to, let's say we go to uh, adventures because I have full access will take you into one of the ones that uh, that we were working on early on let's see where are we here oh beneath the canopy green that is the C series and I think I worked on ends meet I think it was the very first one I put in and it was a learning curve for all of us and um, this is how we do the, the top, the, the covers from now on. You'll see it when it gets there in a second. Uh, we put the front cover and the back cover on. Thank you to Epi who sort of created this template. Um, I think it looks really good. It allows everybody to see what the artwork looks like. And I'm, I'm fond of this art cover, the cover on here. Mostly, I, <clears throat> I'm not a huge art guy, I'm more about the words. But I think that the, uh, the art in here is, is really, uh, really good. Uh, there, it's coming up for you guys now. Can you see that? I'll just stay on here for a second. Let's see. Yeah, so you've got ends meet, uh, C6. Is that showing up, anyone? Let me just ask. Huh. Well, if anybody sees it, you'll let me know. So this is at the highest level the deities have aired. We have it kind of broken. We have followers, then rulers, no, followers, then citizens, then rulers, then deities uh, of air. Uh, so that this is the deity of air section. So you could get this whole adventure. Uh, again, it gives you the introduction, then sort of the synopsis of it on the back. And then you can go to read the document. All right, thanks. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, now this one has been fully blown out, so anything that you see here that's in red 
It's just it will take you to the link. Uh, let's let's click on ends meet. This is going to take you to the map section that gives you where ends meet is. Sort of a introduction to ends meet, and also will show you what's in ends meet. So if you want to go to the Cockle Burn Inn and Tavern, which is featured in, in the C6 ends meet. It'll take you there, or you can read a little synopsis about it right here and not have to go there. I love this part of it. It's my, my favorite part. And uh, both Wayne and, and Bake uh, were instrumental in helping us get this set up so that it's got the names of the town. Filling it out, learning, they learned the ins and outs of it. I was sort of like, okay, well, how do we do this? And they, they figured it out. Uh, so I, I'm really uh, in, in their debt. And uh, Honey Badger and Perry and and everybody that kind of worked on this, and uh, Alice, uh, Alice, who's doing our videos now, she she started with this one and started linking it um, so that you know it would also have hyperlinks, uh, just like I went to the cemetery right there, just by clicking on it. It takes you down there. Then you got the crypt, uh, and so anything that's in C6 ends me is in here. So you can basically. For I think $15 a month, you've got access to all the adventures that we do, all the stat blocks, all of the NPCs, the maps, um, and anything that we do basically is in here. Um, what is it going to, all right, are you saying going to give you a lag time? I'm ready. Uh, Papa, that's my special word. I guess we're testing the uh, lag time here. He's just now telling him he's ready. So, Papa, that's my special word. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so about eight, eight clicks, eight, eight beats. Uh, all right, so I will try to slow it down, guys. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but you know your brain wants to move faster than than it uh, than the computer does around here, and even an old brain like mine. We can test out, yeah, uh, test it out next time. Again, we're just kind of getting started. Once I know what my lag is, I'll get better at this, and uh, hopefully we're gonna do like every other week. Maybe we'll do a show and highlight, and we'll we'll have we'll take questions. One of the things that I'm really interested in uh, is um, hearing what you guys want uh, out of it. Um, you know, what do you guys want to do with uh, World Anvil? What do you want to see happen in there? What would make your games better? Uh, that sort of stuff. So, if you're on and you've got it, you've got a comment or a question, please just put it out there, and I'll find it and I'll start uh, answering it as much as I can. Um, Steve is going to be the expert on the uh, machinations of, of the world of Aird, uh, but uh, I can sort of answer most questions that are uh, about how, how World Anvil works. And basically, uh, I don't know if, if, if Chuck's around, we'll get him to throw this in here, but if you're interested, you can, uh, for your followers, just go to World Anvil, uh, World of Aird, and get the free access. Uh, oh. And just hit followers, and then send send me the information. Yeah, like I, I'm just seeing someone right now actually is doing that. You just request uh, the free access, and I'll give you the code. But if you're interested in the higher tiers, um, I think there's a five, ten, and fifteen per month, uh, and you can go uh, to um, our Patreon account and uh, sign up that way. And that also gives you access to our GMTT, the the tricks of the trade that Steve does. I think we're up to number 67 now with a few repeats of archives. But there's there's a over 340 now, I think, um, that it will allow you to uh, go see those and search all through them. There's a searchable database. Again, that's Bake's job. or not. It's not his job, but I mean, he figured it out. I had the idea, okay, let's make it searchable and sortable. Uh, so you can sort by date. You can write in, let's say you want to know about, um, you know, cats. If the word cats shows in that, it'll show up. Uh, if the word Dr. Pepper is in there, it'll show up, and that, that word shows up a lot. 
but uh, <laughs> you, it, I just think it's a really neat resource. Uh, we, we go over them, or Steve goes over them on Thursdays, and we send out a newsletter. Uh, but we just got countless and countless uh, questions about how we could, uh, can they get access to them. And yeah, we send out the newsletter, but we only send it out once. So if you don't have that newsletter, uh, then you don't. If you don't keep it, then you don't. You don't know what what was there. So we started uh, putting them in there, and now every week on usually on Friday we'll premiere premiere the newsletter, and then we'll premiere the uh, on the show uh, on Thursdays at four. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, Chuck, you said the tiny URL we provided for the Kickstarter is broken. Uh, let me give you the long URL here. And hopefully that didn't screw things up. Where did it go? Where did you people go? How do I type in this damn thing? Oh, here we go. All right. Comes to adventure. Try that one if it didn't if if it will work for you, Martin Elgar. All right. Uh. So anyway, oh yeah, the GM tricks of the trade. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, you know, go to the Patreon and we we'll give you a little flavor of it. But if you haven't seen the show, he takes five usually themed ideas. We did monsters last week, uh, mon running monsters in in a horror genre, uh, and uh, it's just great. He goes through them and he'll answer your questions and he'll ramble on like I'm doing now for a while and answer those things. And on Tuesdays we do the AMA, which is Ask Me Anything. And that usually starts with books and starts with adventures and then devolves into any sort of weird book that he's reading or movie that he's seen or uh, Letter Kenny, which is one of our both favorite shows. Uh, and... Uh, Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Uh, and then we're, uh, let's see that. And then Daniel has the haunted holler painting, which is on Wednesday nights at 7 PM. Uh, and, um, then let's see, Chuck, are you still doing your game on Saturday mornings or have you started back on that yet? Excuse me. Um, let's see. All right. So let's, We'll go on back to here. I want to show you some of the maps. Uh, and I need to, that'll come back over here in a second. And you'll see that the map, when it comes up, it's all populated. Um, this is the whole of the world of air. Down at the bottom, you get a little bit of thing that says this is the map of the, uh, the whole of the world of air. And then you can kind of tear down anything that's in, in blue here, I believe, will give you the information if you click on it. And I'm trying to wait for there uh, for a second here. Chuck is saying, I'm taking a break with it. I have two more coming. Oh, okay, you're taking a break from, from the game? Okay. All right, so now here's the world should be populating now on your screen. Uh, and so let's say I want to look at the Rhineland. Um, I can just mouse over it and it'll give me a little bit of information. But if I click on it, it's going to bring up the bigger section over here. Uh, and it's going to give you the climate, the landmass, the populace, the mythology, the history. Uh, and then you can even go and read the full article on another section. But it's nice that it'll kind of just pop off to the left. And if you want to close that, you just do that. You click on the little uh, hamburger and it'll move it off to the left-hand side. And then there are plenty of other blue ones. Um, and let's just click on, like, say, uh, let's click on cough. Not much is known about Koth. So that's one of the places in the world that has not been sort of fully populated. So I like to dream of things that I could put in there. All right, now, so let's get to a populated section that will kind of help tell you how to drill down through this thing. So anything in red is going to mean that it's going to take you to an actual another map. 
And right now, the major part that we have is in the lands of Ursul. Uh, so it's going, I'll click on that. And then I'll give you guys a second to, to catch up. This really would be better if I lived back in Coral. Uh, so I'll give it a second and let it come up. And I appreciate you guys hanging with us. Uh, if you have not been on here before and you want to give us a follow, we'd sure appreciate it. Um, we'll get notif notified about when things are happening on here uh, and uh, what uh, you know, whatever show is, is coming up. Uh, for instance, um, this show was sort of just thrown in there, but eventually if we get it better, we'll start doing, uh, we'll start doing more of this. Now, it should be bringing up the map of the lands of Ursul. Um, nice thing about this is this one is, there's nine sections, there's nine maps to it. They're all, you can buy them separate, you can look at them online separate. But they'll also take you down into another map if we have them populated. So, for instance, if we wanted to go down here to uh, the Darken Fold, uh, I'm going to click on the Darken Fold. If I can, there we go. And this, well, I'm sorry, this is actually takes me to the blow up of the nine maps. <clears throat> and then we can further go into the Darken Fold after that. The Dark and Fold is where most of Steve's uh, games are run. And uh, you people that have run and been in games with him, you'll recognize a lot of the names when we get in further down a little bit. Uh, but there's uh, Brindisium is in there, Kaomar, Maine, which uh, I believe he gave a nod to me for that one uh, when he was writing it. There's something else in here, I think, that was for me and uh, our friend Kenneth. But uh, you start running out of place names really fast if you don't, you know, so I get it. Um, all right, so now you should be on the Dark and Fold map or the Southwest Lands of Ursul. And what we're going to do is we're going to... Oh, the nice thing about this, too, when you're in these certain levels, uh, you can mouse over something. And it'll give you a brief synopsis of it. If there's any information on it, and if you want to click on it, it'll give you more information. This is what is one of the more difficult things I think to do. Um, Bake Sauce and, and Wayne and I all figured out how instead of just having it, because our maps were already filled out with the little dots and everything that you can see on them. Uh, and those, uh, those are really hard to work, but we figured out you could just draw it. And so we had to draw around everything that was on the map uh, and then make it in there. So it, it basically with a you know, I can't remember what that's called, but you're basically going dot by dot. Go up here, then go to the right, and just basically tracing the whole of the name. I need to figure out how to get a pointer on this thing. Uh, Chuck, that's a note for me, just to get a pointer. Um, now, so let's say we wanted to know more about Loon Crutch. Click on it, and then it's eventually going to come up with Loon Crutch. And the nice thing is, if you go into Loon Trek at the higher levels, you're going Loon Tretch. Uh, you're going to see this, and then if you just went the other way, it would show you where on the map it is. Uh, which, again, I, I have to give a nod to, uh, I think, Bake Sauce for figuring that out. Um, so that, that, that to me is really cool. But now let's dive into the Dark and Fold, which is one of our more intricate maps. And there we go. I think I started with this one. This is where I had, had started doing it and learning how to make them that way. Uh, so you just mouse over anything. And it's going to give you a little bit of the information. Like uh, Lily Fair. Uh, and I love, I love that one. Uh, you can take that and, and read about it and find out more about it. You can set your game in there if you want to. But if you're playing in a, one of our adventures and, you know, it's set in, in this uh, area, you'd be able to look at it and be able to see where you are. And I think that's how Steve is, is basically running his online games right now, just by bringing up the stuff on the map so people can see where they are. Um, but these maps are really involved. I love them. Uh, Peter uh, and Steve worked hard on getting them all set up. Uh, so you can see, you know, it's, it's just a good 
good thing to have. But that's not all we've got. Whoops. I'll take the shortcut back to the World of Air at Home page. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, I appreciate you sticking around, uh, listening to me ramble on a few minutes. I haven't done this in a while, so I'm a little nervous. I'll get better at it as we go along and we get more people in here so I can shut up uh, and have them uh, talk more about it. Let's see, let's go to, okay, so here are some of the things that are, I think are unique to the way we do it as opposed to others. Um, we have it all broken down. Oh, hey, look, I, it looks like we've gotten three followers since this started, so uh, I really appreciate it, guys. As soon as I get off of this, I will go over to my emails, and I will get you access uh, in the follower section, so I appreciate you hanging with me. Uh Let's go to the economic tiers because I think this is one of the things that it's at the higher level. So uh, it's one of the nice things that you can just, you know, go and if you want to get into this and you want to really dive in, you've got four, I think, uh, no, five economic tiers. And so it'll bring out all the information that you would get for a tier one. Uh, this indicates production of foodstuffs, clothing, and essentials. It is usually limited to local trade. Um, and again, you're, you've got the lag and I keep forgetting about the lag, which is, but I'll just have to get used to it. Slow yourself down. Hey, what, uh, what was the question? Oh, Daniel said, I would ask questions, but I'm working on something at the day job. What is that? What's a day job? Oh yeah. I'm just kidding. This is my day job. My night job is trying to destroy bread. I've been, my wife and I are again in the middle of nowhere, so we've been doing what people in the middle of nowhere and people in the pandemic have been doing, is just sort of making bread and stuff. I've been making my own yogurt for, I don't know, over a year now. Uh, and then we started making kombucha, uh, which uh, I really love. And then started our hands on making our own starter uh, for, for sourdough and for any kind of bread. Um, and that's been a challenge. I mean, the first one I did, um, for some reason, the leaven didn't rise, uh, levan rather. So the light, night before you're supposed to bake, you're supposed to change things up. And I might have not been using uh, whole wheat flour. I thought I was, but I think I might have been using a red wheat flour. And uh, for those of you who don't give a, a rat's ass about bread, you can just, you know, take a five minute nap. Uh, but uh, I love to, to try out things that take a while, you know, because you got nothing else to do. Uh, so anyway, I made the bread, and it was like a hockey puck. It just was didn't rise, didn't do anything. And then, hey, I can give you the, the starter recipe. I'll, I'll give you a, a link there, Daniel. It's, it's been awesome. Oh, yeah, you've been doing smoking meat. I have been doing that too, some, not as much. I, I got into doing some ribs, and I did a... I did a huge uh, Boston butt uh, and made a vinegar sauce for for the barbecue. That was really fun. Um, and that, but the the bread didn't work. And then so I thought maybe something wrong with my starter. So I started all over on my starter. So that takes a whole full week because basically what you're doing is instead of buying yeast, you're getting it out of the air where you are. So you know you put flour and water in a jar. Uh, and basically just kind of got it for the first couple of days you just hoping to develop anything and then you sort of add more uh, whole wheat flour and AP flour and with water and then stir it and after a little bit you start to get um, a you know yeast forming and it starts to get bubbles in there and then you're able to use it for your bread so the second one I did better still didn't rise as much it was too wet by the time you're supposed to go and slice your, your bread with a razor and then it releases so the steam and then it'll let it rise and, and open up and well about half of it worked but I, I could not get it to cut so if anybody out there is, is really good at making bread let me know because I want to know how to do it better uh, it's something I get sort of obsessed with and then um, so what else have we been doing hopefully the screen's caught up by now yeah it has <laughs> but I, I get excited by talking about, about food things uh just doing things like that are fun eventually i want to learn how to well, we've got a compost going but it's not going great either um 
I want to start trying to do other types of breads, but we're going to try to get a loaf going first. All right, so enough of me rambling on about my food. I do that to, to Steve and Chuck all day. Steve would care less about food. He likes a hamburger and he likes Dr. Pepper anytime or a steak. Whenever he's over here, I'll have a, we'll make a steak. Uh, occasionally he'll eat a pork chop. But beyond that, it's, that's pretty much what it is. His, his wife, Kathy, loves uh, food, so, so she, she at least, uh, you know, pretends to like what it is. All right, so let's get back into this. Um, so we looked at the tier, economic tiers. Uh, we can look at the kingdoms. We looked at it a little bit. Uh, those are really cool. I love seeing those. Um, it's my inner Steve. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, we both have our eccentricities, I suppose. Uh, we can look at the peoples. Uh, this is pretty cool. So if you go into the giants, and then it's going to give you basically the overview of the giants. And then if you wanted to know more about the fire giants, click on that, and you got the fire giants. Um, to Let's see, the fire giants generally live in dungeons near the surface. So whatever you need for a game, we're close to getting it in there. But if there's things that are not there, uh, that's the, what we want to hear from you guys. We want to know what is missing and what might make it better for you. Uh, because we're, we're going to try to pick this back up. I, I, uh, we've got several people who are using it, and I love to see people using it. Uh, but I really want it to be more in the forefront of what we're doing because I, unlike Steve, I, I embrace the digital world. I, I love the everything that happens in there uh and i love to be able to uh, just stay at my computer this is where i do most of my work uh this you know now with with covid we don't even have to go to a con i can just stay here at my desk or outside on the porch um it's too cold today and then i can sit with maggie which let's see let's see if we, everybody can see maggie where is she Get my head out of the way. Move your head. There she is. She is my 13-year-old boxer who my friend just put that ramp in for her because she can't. She can no longer get up on there. But that's her futon. If you ever come visit me, do not sit on the short futon. It reeks. Yeah, that's Maggie. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Uh, she is. Uh, well, she's with me 100% of the day. That's all we do is hang out together. So she she likes to she likes to work weird hours. Uh, all right, so I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, you guys have been horribly patient with me. I sure appreciate it. Um, and then uh, we just uh, you know I'm gonna get better at it. I'm gonna show more here. And then we're going to start adding more and more and more. One of the things that Wayne is working on now is uh, trying to present this for how people can play uh, in, in aired from World Anvil. Uh, the things that aren't here, we're going to try to fix that. We're going to be doing monsters. We're going to be doing spells. Um, so really, if you haven't given us a follow on World Anvil, uh, you should. It's free. And then uh, if we can rope you into that, then uh, we might get you into further sections of it and you'll start playing some of the games in there. But if you want to just check it out, you can go to, uh, let's see where, you can go right here, give us a follow, and then I will send you access for that and you'll be able to uh, to start start messing around in that section that says followers. Thank you, M. Heard. That's Matt, correct? Good to see you here. How you doing? It's so fun. I, I've, I've mentioned this to people before. Like, I go to a con, and I've been working for uh, Troll Lord for, I don't know, ten, a decade probably. Longer than that doing editing. But um, you meet people online, and you talk to them online, and uh, you get the nicknames and stuff, but you don't put a face to that. And then when, when you go to a con, and you finally meet somebody, you're like, oh, wow, I've been talking to you for six years. And then and suddenly you get a chance to have a beer or talk to them. That, that's, that's the fun part to me of a con. The rest of the cons, not so much because there's very little sleep, mostly work, and then you're driving 12 hours and then, or 18 hours, and then you get home on Sunday morning 
or Monday morning at 2 a.m. and you start working about 7. So that gets old. Uh, but regardless, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me a few minutes. Please uh, give us a follow here. Uh, and uh, we will be around. You can always reach me at product support at trollord.com. If you have any questions or concerns about anything we do or you have any thoughts or advice, uh, then we're happy to listen. And um, I want to thank everybody for joining me today. For I, mean, I don't think I've been on, on this for probably four months at least. Uh, so it was nice to see a few friendly faces out there. And uh, you guys have a good uh, rest of your week. Hopefully you'll join us back here at 4 o'clock for Ask Me Anything with Steve. He's doing this special Reddit uh, thing, uh, so Ask Me Anything. I think that's happening over on Reddit. Uh, and uh, then at 4, he's going to go live with the questions that he's asking. So go check that out if you want. Come back here at 4, check that out. And uh, then at 5, it's happy hour, and there will be something else other than coffee in this. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.